Hello and welcome to today's video, which is all about using Custom Gravity, a brand new node available to you in Unreal Engine 5.4 in Preview 1. Now, as I've just mentioned, this is in Preview 1, so it can be subject to change based upon the full release. If it is a big change, I'll just re-record it. But right now, it's a pretty cool feature and I thought it would be worth showing off. Now, it isn't perfect. There's a few things to still figure out, um, mostly related down to controls. But as you'll see in the video, there are ways around that. And room for improvement that's for certain so let's get started as i already mentioned we are in unreal engine 5.4 preview one so be careful things that you may say here may look different to how they are in the full release of the thing if it is a major difference i'll do an update video but in unreal engine 5.4 They've exposed a handy little node in our character's movement component. And that is the ability to change the character's direction. So we're going to take the character movement out and we'll do set gravity direction. And we can plug in any vector in here and it'll change the gravity direction. And it will auto uh, orientate the animation as well. Uh, so the character is facing the right way with the capsule. Um, there are a few caveats and things to be aware of that changes with inputs, especially. But we'll come across those in a second. So, making use of this node then, we want to change the character's own personal gravity based upon some gravity fields that they're in. Now, the method we're going to be using is going to be very similar, if not the same, as Mario Galaxy's method of handling gravity. So, the way they handle it are using uh, certain fields, like collision fields. And these fields then determine what kind of gravity is enacted on the player. So, we're going to go ahead and create in here a gravity fields folder. Because there are different types of gravity fields you see in that game. And we're going to look at a few of them over the course of a couple of videos. So the first one we were looking at is the spherical one. So standard planetoid on a big ball, basically, uh, gravity field. So in here, we're going to create a blooper class for actor. And this could be your parent class for all the gravity fields. So BP gravity field. And that'd be the parent one. We are then going to open this up. And inside of here... On the functions, we're going to call this and do get gravity direction. Now, sometimes the gravity direction is going to be relative to the actor who's calling it and their location in relation to it. So when we do get gravity direction, we want to add an input to this. That'd be an actor reference. And that'd be the, we'll just call it actor. Okay, this is the actor that we want to get the gravity direction in relation to. So hit compile. Uh, also, an output, sorry, we're going to add in here a vector, and that'd be gravity direction. OK. Compile that and save. Uh, and that's basically it for the parent class. So we're going to close that. And let's create the child of this by right-clicking and choosing Create Child Blueprint Class. And it's going to be called Gravity Field Sphere. Now, in this one, we're going to add a sphere collision to this thing. So add a sphere collision, make it fairly large. We'll change the sphere radius here to a thousand. So it sticks out a little bit like that. And if I then go to the functions, I'm going to go to override and choose the get gravity direction, BP gravity field option. So click on that. And there's our parent class and their gravity field direction. Now the sphere, is very much dependent on the actor who's on the sphere and their location direction between them and the center of the sphere. So the gravity direction here, we're going to get the actor, get their actor location. We're going to get this actor location. And we're going to get a direction between the actor and the sphere. So get unit direction from the player actor, in this case, the player. And then two will go towards the self actor location. And that gives direction, and we're just going to plug that into gravity direction. Okay, so it's relative to whoever is calling it. Compile, save. Next, let's go back to our player character. So on our player character, we've got this going on, but where do we call this? Well, we're going to do actor begin overlap, and on the other actor, we're going to cast to a gravity field, the parent class of it. And from that, 
I can go and get gravity direction. Now it's going to require the actor. In this case, it'll be self. And the gravity direction, we can plug into our set gravity direction. Okay. Now that is on begin overlap and it's changed the gravity direction to that. However, this is not entirely useful because once we've set the gravity direction, as we start moving around it, the gravity direction is going to change somewhat. So we need to update it all the time. So what we're going to do is when we cast the gravity field, we can get the gravity direction. We're going to promote the gravity field to a variable. Current gravity field. And we'll plug that in to there. And I'll just tie this up by plugging the target into there instead. Okay, next is the tick event. So we need a tick event because we constantly need to check what the gravity direction is for our gravity field. So we're going to drag out our variable we just made and do get, right click on it and convert to validated get. We only want to do this when this thing has a valid current gravity field. And if it's valid, I can take from there and basically copy what we got here. So we've copied over the get gravity direction, plugging in the self into actor and outputting the gravity direction back into our character movement. So compile that and save that. Now on actor end overlap, it's slightly a little bit different. Actor end overlap. If the end overlap, we need to check whether or not we have ended the overlap of a gravity field, first of all. So other actor cast to gravity field and then we're going to check if we're inside of any other gravity field so we're going to do overlapping actor is overlapping actor actually we want to get overlapping actors get overlapping actors and choose the gravity field okay so this will give us an array of all the gravity fields for overlapping. So we've got multiple, it'll give us all those. And so from there, we're just going to get the first one in the list. So get a copy of index zero. And we're going to set that to the current gravity field, which we'll need a cast to. Do another cast here. There we go. And set it into current gravity field. If the cast failed, here we'll set current gravity field here to nothing and also if this cast failed here we'll set that to nothing too now we don't really need to have this first cast because we're not using this blue pin if we're not using it we don't need to use another cast so rather than using that i'm going to put in a branch instead and false would be our clearing of the current gravity field true will carry on as normal but the condition here is just going to check the other actor's class. So get class. And we're going to see if that is a child of the gravity field class. That make it a bit more performant for you. Okay. So if we overlap end the overlap of one gravity field, it'll check to see if we're overlapping any others. If we are, great gravity field. We probably want to do another check to see whether or not this is actually true or not. So what we'll do here is before we do the get, we'll just see the length. And we'll say if this is greater than zero, that means they found a gravity field to reattach to. So true will carry on. And then false will be this clearing of the current gravity field again. File save. Okay, let's close that and let's put in a little planetoid. So we're going to go in here and put in a, a sphere shape. And we'll just put that up over here. And I'm also then going to bring in my gravity field for this. Now, this is the size of it, but you can change it to whatever size you like by just scaling it. That is a bit too big for my liking. I'm going to turn it way down. Obviously, the bigger it is, the harder it will be to escape its gravitational pull. So bear that in mind. 
like so. I didn't want to be perfectly aligned, but it would do. In fact, what I can do, if I can copy the location of this one, paste the location of it there. There we go. Okay, so let's push play and take a look at what happens. Now, right away, you're going to notice something a bit weird when we connect with the sphere. So gravity is doing its job. We're sticking to the sphere just fine. But if I push forwards, so W, okay, not too bad. Rotation is a bit weird, but you notice that I can't get much higher than that. Okay. Now, as I say, rotation is a bit weird. It doesn't match what you want it to. We're on the side here. Um, and these talks about some of the caveats of our gravity addiction, uh, being stuck onto gravity um, modifiers. So on our player character, we need to change a couple of things about how movement works. But first of all, we need to know whether or not when we attach ourselves to a, uh, act a, a gravity field as well. So we're going to add a, ver a, a event, custom event. And here we're going to do on gravity changed. Okay. And we're going to set that on the begin overlap. So on gravity change, call that there. Okay. Now, if that gravity change gets called, that is basically when we're going to change some of the movement settings of our character. So a few things we need to change regarding our character's movement. So right off the bat is our move controls. Our move controls are currently using get control rotation. Now control rotation is a world rotation. So when I'm pushing W, I'm trying to say go forwards in the world, but forwards for me now is up because I'm in gravity is going up. So I can't rely on control rotation to move forwards and right anymore. So instead I'm gonna use the actor's rotation. So right click, get actor forward vector and actor right vector. And I'm going to replace what we've got here, with this one. I'm not going to delete it just yet. I'm just going to keep that there and put in the forward vector into our forward one here. So this will immediately make things a little bit better when navigating around on this sphere. So we've got a a few problems with our controls down here, so more on that in a moment. But let's take a look at the sphere instead. Okay, so if I push W, as you can see, my character is just going to walk forwards. So what you'll find is your characters change into tank controls, right? So forwards means they'll go forwards in whatever direction they're currently facing, and otherwise it will take whatever way our control rotation is facing. Okay. So if you want to keep tank controls, that's fine. Now, the biggest problem you're going to find with this is talking about the controls of the camera with controls of the character. So at the moment, it's based upon his axis rotation. If I want him to go whichever way the, the direction of the camera's going, I need to get that direction in relation to the gravity. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my player character. And instead of using control rotation, we are going to use the camera's world uh, view, like this actor's look location, basically. The camera's look location. So I'm going to take the follow camera, drag this out, and I'm going to get forward vector, and also get right vector. And the right vector we're going to put into movement input there, and forward vector we'll put into movement there. So let's take a look at how that one differs. So let's go ahead and test this out. I go and run onto our little planet here. And there we go. Okay, and as you can see, I can control his movement a little bit better now. Now this isn't perfect because it does have some little caveats. As I mentioned, there are some little niggling things to figure out. Uh, one is that if we were to put the camera straight down top of him, he walks very slowly um, because obviously it's trying to go in a direction which the camera's going. So ideally, the camera will stay flush with the floor. Okay, we'll stay parallel with it. But it doesn't do that. So we need to figure out a way of doing that. And as soon as I do, I'll make a video on it. But right now, this will work. And if I jump 
we can still gravity still affects us now if i was to make it so that i have two planetoids okay next to each other so we'll take this and gravity's field and sphere here and we'll put this one over here what we should do is the gravity field of the new one should override the gravity field of this one so we should transfer over to this other one so let's go this way there we go and we can go back again yeah so it's not the most perfect solution but right now it's pretty damn good okay and it's cool that we actually finally have something like this in here now, as I mentioned, it's a mirror galaxy. They use different types of shapes to create different gravity patterns. And so what we'll do in a few more episodes is show you a few ways of them achieving that. Uh, but right now, uh, yeah, this is pretty good. We'll leave it like this. So there you have it. We've got some custom gravity now working in 5.4. And we've got some minor solutions to some of the control problems however this isn't perfect as somebody mentioned there are some things that i want to improve and if i do find a good solution for it i'll be sure to share that with you in another video but what we we'll do is going to do another video on custom gravity looking at different types of gravity field shapes that we can uh, try and make that matches sort of things we'd see in gravity uh, in mario uh, super mario galaxy and other gravity based games like that so if you watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely is where you'll find it from just $1 a month. You get access to all my videos early before everyone else. Thank you so much to everyone who supported me over there on Patreon. And thank you for everyone who has subscribed to the channel. If you're not really subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.